In the great hall at Westminster, a king lies in state. King George begins his last state journey through his capital to the hallowed St. George's Chapel, Windsor. The gun carriage is drawn by men of the Royal Navy in a mile-long procession. The new sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II, rode with the Queen Mother, Princess Margaret, and the Princess Royal. Then the four royal dukes, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Duke of Gloucester, the Duke of Windsor, and the 16-year-old Duke of Kent. And in the next column of mourners, the King's personal naval aide-de-camp, Earl Mountbatten of Burma. From Parliament Square into the stillness of Whitehall and towards the Cenotaph. Grant him thy peace, O Lord, we pray. Who of us all has earned it best? who wore for us his life away. Give thou this king a warrior's rest. Back along the procession to the gun carriage now crossing Horse Guards Parade. The coffin, draped with the royal standard, bears the crown, the orb and the scepter. And following the gun carriage, the sovereign standard, borne by a warrant officer of the household cavalry. In the following coach rides the Queen Mother, with her two daughters and her memories sustaining her on this day of grief, while at Marlborough House, the gracious and dearly loved Queen Mary was paying a mother's farewell tribute. So through the heart of the busy capital winds the solemn cavalcade. On this day of mourning, it's a London silent and still. It's citizens remembering that here in this very city, their king had faced with them the dangers of the last war. Let all good things await him who cares not to be great, but as he saves or serves the state. Not once or twice in our rough island story, the path of duty was the way to glory. His duty done, 
to sleep serenely under royal Windsor skies. Slowly through this burial place of kings moves the cortege. Gone now is the pomp and pageantry of London's procession. Instead, a more medieval note, befitting a town so long connected with the crown. Now, the sovereign standard is borne by a mounted warrant officer of the household cavalry, with an escort of officers and trumpeter on his flank. Then a single carriage, the Queen's carriage, drawn by two Windsor Greys. When the Queen entered the Royal Borough of Windsor, the Royal Standard was broken from the masthead above the Round Tower. Through the Cambridge Gate, and on up the long walk towards the castle, beneath whose ancient walls stands St George's Chapel, built nearly 500 years ago. The chapel houses 500 years of history, the resting place of kings and queens, from the houses of York and Lancaster to Hanover and Windsor, all of whom have contributed to Britain's greatness. Now, King George VI joins the noble company, beloved of all, not just the ruler of his people, but a friend, someone we trusted and loved. Mourned by all, not only in our commonwealth of nations, but by the peoples whose rulers made the long journey to London to honour his memory. The King of Sweden, the King of the Hellenes, the King of Denmark, Queen Juliana of Holland and the King of Iraq. The presidents of France, Turkey and Yugoslavia, all paying their respects to the perfect embodiment of a constitutional ruler. Britain has lost a good and kindly king, whose duty to his country, even unto death, was his first consideration. And as a new Elizabethan era opens before us, with all its noble heritage from the past, let us, each one of us, strive to make our young queen's reign prosperous and great. <laughs> 